Hello, I want to show you my very first and still running computer. In June 1977 the German do-it-yourself electronics magazine Elector came out with this do-it-yourself project, this camp. That was shortly after the famous Apple I came out in 1976. Sadly I didn't purchase one of these. Surely this would have been a better investment. But look what we see on the cover of this first edition. <clears throat> In the first stage the computer system consisted of this little board with a microprocessor from National Semiconductor, this camp. And the bigger I.O. and RAM board in the front. The system proudly came out with an amazing lot of 256 bytes of RAM. It had eight addressable LEDs. For example, to signal the states of bytes in the RAM or the content of registers. Then there were two dual inline switches. <clears throat> which were used to, d to select an address in RAM and to modify the content. You can imagine that it was quite hard to enter even a very small program to run the obligatory blinki blinking LEDs. The breakthrough came with the following issues of the magazine elector. The scamp system got a bus to address several cards in euro format. Step by step there came a new CPU card, a RAM and I.O. card, a separate card with hex keyboard and eight seven segment displays, cards with more RAM and an EPROMA. Last but not least there was a resident monitor and debugging program called LBUG. But now let's see it running. Of course it had to have its power plant. It needs about 2.2 ampere at 5 volt and about 200 milliamps at minus 12 volt. For the RS232 serial port it needs another plus 12 volt. Let's see what happened. Ah, it shows LBUG. The monitor is running. Now let's change some values in the RAM. Modify address. Value. Next address. Next value. That works. Now let's enter a little program. Program. Running LEDs in SCAMP machine language. Modify address value. Next address, next value, and so on. OK, OK, that's boring. Entering the last commands. Ready. Reset, run address, 
2000 Run. Oh, success! The LEDs are running. When the system was powered off, all the entered program code was gone. To preserve code or data, you could either burn them into an EEPROM or write them to a tape or cassette recorder. This is the cassette recorder, the cassette interface, which turned the digital data into a frequency modulated audio signal. To have some practical use, this camp needed more input and output facilities. To get data in and out, I invented this input-output card. Don't ask me from where to where all these cables go. However, in its first years, this camp could print on a teletype Lorenz Lo 15 teletype writer. Later, it could use a Olympia AS100 Daisy Will typewriter as alphanumeric keyboard and as a printer. Now it could be used for word processing and in 1984 I used this camp to write my thesis, more than 100 pages of text. At a time, only a small portion of the text could be inspected on the Seven Sigmund display. However, the possibility to change a text, a text without typing new the entire page was a great breakthrough. In 1984, my scamp was replaced by the CT86, an Intel 8086 do-it-yourself project by the computer magazine CT which in its final state ran the DOS operational system and had keyboard, monitor, floppies, hard disk and mouse. Since then my scamp however patiently rested in its shelf all the 35 years. Some weeks ago I repowered the scamp and it ran like a one. I made a RS232 interface ready to connect it to my PC to get rid of using the awkward cassette interface. There are still some other folks around with a heart for this camp. Now come on and see some useful things that could be done with this camp. Disassembler. We enter the start address of the program in the EEPROM, then the start address and the end address of the code in the memory to disassemble, and off we go. Word processing. We start the program, select to enter text, write some text. You can see the letters appearing on the display. Now we print it out.
Thank you for watching.